What's up guys? Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com. So this is actually the inaugural video on this channel. So in this video, we're going to get started by getting to know the Fusion 360 workspace. So where the different tools are, how everything comes together, and maybe some basic shapes um, in this first intro tutorial. So some of you may know me from the SketchUp Essentials YouTube channel. So I've been teaching SketchUp for a long time. So for a while, I've wanted to branch out into other 3D programs as well, not necessarily because I dislike SketchUp or that I'm going to stop doing that, but because as a person I want to become more well-rounded in the different 3D applications I can use. So on this channel we're going to have tutorials about how to use Fusion 360 to create lots of different kinds of shapes, different objects, other things like that. So I'm really excited to be here and let's go ahead and just jump into it. When you first open up Fusion 360, your workspace is going to look something like this. Now Autodesk has been known to kind of move things around on this, so some things have changed in previous versions to this one. So generally things may move around a little bit, but for right now at least they're going to look something like this. And so what I thought I'd do is I'd start by giving you a tour of the workspace. So where everything's located and just how you can use that um, in order to uh, create and manage your different files things like that. So when you first take a look at this, at the very top, you're going to have a menu bar um, along the top that's going to allow you to basically access things like where your files are located. So this is where you're going to manage the opening and saving of different files. So if you click on this button right here for data panel, that's going to have information about your different projects as well as libraries and samples and some tutorials and other different kinds of things. So you can use this to create new projects if you want to do that. Um, so you can use this button right here or um, as you move to the right, you can see how you have a file drop down, which is going to have all of the, the options that you would expect. So everything from, you know, where you can create new designs and new drawings to where you can open them to where you can save them. Now, let's talk a little bit about saving because inside of Fusion 360, you save everything to the cloud. So this is a fairly cloud-based program and that means everything's going to be saved inside of the Autodesk cloud. And so you can see how if I was to click on the save button for this file, for example, you can see how this gives me options for locations. Well, all of these are contained inside of Autodesk's cloud offering, meaning that these aren't being saved locally, but instead they're being saved online. Now you can download these files and access them locally, but it kind of breaks some of the functionality of the different saving and things like that. So instead, what we're generally going to do is we're going to manage all of this online inside of the cloud. So um, Autodesk recommends that if you need to work primarily with local files rather than online files, then you probably need to use Autodesk Inventor rather than Fusion 360. And so there's options in here for projects. So your overall projects are going to show up over in the project section here. And then within each one of those projects, you're going to have the option to create different kinds of folders. So you can see how, for example, I can create a folder for essential style videos and then within that I can create another folder to save different models inside of there. So you're going to use projects and folders to keep everything organized inside of Fusion. And so then you have your undo and your redo buttons, which are fairly self-explanatory, but then you're also going to have these tabs across the page so that you can have multiple different designs open at once. So let's say right here I wanted to create a simple sketch with like a circle I wanted to offset that in a little bit. And then I wanted to extrude that. So this would be my first file right here. And we could save this as whatever we wanted to save this as. Well, you could click on this button right here to have a second design open. So let's say for this one, we wanted more of a rectangle or something like that. So if we were to draw a rectangle here, we could do the exact same thing, you know, and extrude that up. And you can see how we can have both objects open at the same time. So you can click back and forth between your different designs that you have open using these tabs. And so these aren't really like associated with each other. Like these are separate files, meaning that the cylinder is not in the same file as the boxes right here. So I don't believe you can really move those back and forth. I haven't actually tried 
copying, pasting, or anything like that. I don't believe there's any way to move these objects back and forth um, just by like dragging or anything. Um, you might be able to like insert them or something, but generally speaking, think of these as being separate entities that don't really affect each other. They're just different files that you have open at one time. So you also have tools in here for like extensions, which we'll talk about later on. Um, but then the one thing I want you to know about is if you click on your name right here, there's options in here for you to change things about your account, but also things to change your preferences for the way that your user interface is going to work and the way other things are going to work as well. So for example, if I wanted different units in here, I could click on the unit function and this is where you could change if your material units were gonna be in English or metric um, and kind of how they're displayed. So you can set these inside right here. So you can also set your default units for new designs as well as a bunch of other things in here as well. So this is where your preferences are going to be located. So you can also access the learning information by clicking on the little question mark right here. So anyway, that's kind of the top bar. And then the bar below that is where you're going to have the different tools that you can use in order to create and model different things. So you can see how right now, for example, I've got tools in here for solids or surfaces or things like that. These are things for drawing and working inside of 3D. However, you can see how right here, this button under design, this is gonna give you options to change what you're doing inside of Fusion 360. So for example, if I was to click on this drop down right here, you can see how there's options in here, not only for design, which is um, where you're working and drawing in 3D, but also for different things like generative design, um, but then rendering and animations and different simulations. So some of your other options are going to show up in here as well so manufacturing so for example if we wanted to render this out or apply light to this in order to create a more realistic image um, we would do that by going into the render workspace and note that when we do that um, the tools that show up in here are different for different things. So if I was to go into the animation, you would get a timeline down at the bottom um, and then animation related tools up here at the top. So depending on what you're trying to do, you're going to use this drop down to select the tool sets and the different things that you're working with inside of Fusion 360. So then as we move to the right, these are all the tools that you're going to use in order to work inside of your drawing. So like for example, things like if you wanted to cut a hole in this object, tools like that are going to show up in here. So, um, and there's a number of different tools. There's actually more tools. If you click on this button right here for create, you can see how that gives you options for all of these different tools in here. And as you mouse over them, you can see how this gives you kind of a description of what each one does. So if you're looking for a tool in particular, try clicking that drop down and just kind of mousing over this. And this is going to tell you how the tool is going to work. It'll give you kind of a general idea so you can know if you're selecting the right tool or not. But this is how you're going to access all of your different tools at the the top of your page. And these are all editable, meaning you can take these and click and drag them in order to reorder them. You can also add or remove different tools from the toolbar as well. So for example, you can see how there's a lot more tools down here that are shown in the toolbar. Well, if you move your mouse over each one of these objects, you can see how, like for example, the sweep function, which is not shown up here right now, if we were to mouse over that, you get these three little dots. So this will allow you to pin these to your toolbars and then that'll actually show up in your list. So if, for example, you were using the sweep tool a whole bunch, you could set this up where the sweep tool is gonna show up in here. And let's say, for example, that you weren't using the create form, you could turn that off by just clicking on this right here and unchecking the box for pin to toolbar. So you can see how you can use this to uh, you can use this to reorder your toolbar at the top of the page. And one other thing about this is you'll notice that a bunch of these don't have a keyboard shortcut associated with them. Well, if you decide that you want them to have a keyboard shortcut associated with them, because keyboard shortcuts are a lot faster, you can click on the button right here and you can see how like for the sweep, for example, you can click on the button for create keyboard shortcut and then you can add a keyboard shortcut in here um, 
basically as whatever you want. So you can see how you can uh, use any key and then you can also use modifiers like the shift or control. So if you wanted the sweep to be like a shift S or something like that, you would just hold down the shift key and then you would tap the S key. And this will tell you if there's a conflict or not. So sometimes there's a conflict in there. So maybe I would do like a shift F or something like that. But you can use this to make sure that you're not overriding an existing tool. And then once you were done with that, you could just click OK. And then now you can see how that uh, keyboard shortcut actually shows up next to your tool inside of this list. And so we'll talk a little bit more about creating 3D objects a little bit later, but just know that there are multiple different tool sets in here for different things. So solids are going to be where you're going to use solid shapes to kind of interact with each other and to work with those. And then surfaces are going to be where you can create more organic or abnormal shapes manually so that you can bring them into Fusion. So I haven't really done much with the sheet metal tools. We'll talk about that at some point. And then tools on the right hand side gives you options for different add-ins and different inspection things and other things like that. So these are going to be your options for working in 3D and creating different objects inside of Fusion 360. So now let's take a look at our navigation space or our 3D workspace. So our 3D workspace is going to be where you're actually going to create 3D objects and adjust them. So like for example, we've created this cylinder right here. Um, so this is where you're actually going to work in 3D. And so if you look to the right hand side, you've got your view cube or your navigation cube and that's going to allow you to actually adjust the way that you navigate inside of this object. So you can see how it's really easy easy to find like a front view or a top view of this object using this navigation box. So you can also click on the different corners and the different sides in order to uh, kind of adjust the way that your view looks. And then if you ever get stuck or lost, you can just click on the home button. And what that's going to do is that's going to take you back to an isometric view of your object that's basically zoomed in so you can see the extents of what's inside of your model. So you can use that to navigate. You can also use different keyboard and mouse shortcuts. So for example, if I click and hold the middle mouse button that activates the pan tool so that allows me to click and drag my view left right up and down if I scroll in or out using my scroll wheel um, then that's gonna let me zoom in or out and by the way you can adjust that inside of your preferences so like for example by default when I first opened this up there was an option in here um, that I flipped for reverse zoom direction because I'm used to zooming in by scrolling in and out by scrolling out um, but by default this was set up where I would scroll up and this would zoom out and I would scroll down and this would zoom in. So I changed that setting, the reverse zoom direction inside of my preferences. So that's just a good example of your preferences kind of driving the way Fusion 360 is going to operate. So in one other thing, and I probably should have covered this first, but so I highly recommend using a mouse with two buttons and a scroll wheel. So that scroll wheel is going to be very helpful when zooming in and out and also moving around. It acts as a third button, so you can click and hold that down in order to move things. You can also combine that with uh, keyboard shortcuts in order to do other things. So for example, if I click and hold my middle mouse button, this pans, if I hold the shift key, on my keyboard and click and drag my middle mouse button. This is going to orbit around inside of Fusion 360. So by clicking and holding the middle mouse button and holding the shift key, I can access a completely different tool than I could access by just simply clicking and holding that button. So I would recommend kind of practicing that and getting used to that because that's really going to be a huge time saver for you in the future. So on the left hand side of your page, this is where your browser is going to be located. And so you can pop that out or in by clicking the arrow next to browser. And what that's going to do is the browser is actually going to contain information about all the different bodies and sketches and objects inside of your Fusion 360 model. So you can see how you can access different things inside of these folders by clicking these little arrows right here. And so for example, when I first drew this cylinder, what I did was I started off with a sketch and you can see how I can turn that sketch 
on and off using the little eye button right here. So you can toggle different things on and off using the eyes so that you can really only see what you wanna work with and not a bunch of other stuff. But you can see I can toggle that sketch on and off. I can also toggle that body that I had in here on and off as well. So this is really good for keeping everything organized and getting to the different things that you want inside of Fusion 360. So we'll talk more about this in the future. There's also a number of tools at the bottom of the page um, that adjust that allow you to adjust not only your view, so you can see I can access like the orbit tool by clicking on this and then clicking and dragging my left mouse button. So there's also zoom tools in here. So the zoom window, for example, is a really good way to zoom in just on an object. So it allows you to click on this little button right here and then click and drag a box in order to zoom in on a specific space here. And then these options on the right hand side allow you to adjust the way that your um, view looks. So you can see how, for example, under the visual style, I can adjust if this is going to show my edges or not. I can adjust if it's like a wireframe um, or if this is actually going to be shaded with only my visible edges showing. So you can use this to adjust the way that this looks, including things like being able to adjust your environment. So if you wanted this to be like a darker view or something like that, if that was easier for you, you can adjust that inside of your environment settings. So you can see how there's a number of different environment settings. By default, this is set to photo booth, and that's usually where I leave that right now. So there's a number of different things you can use to adjust the way that things look inside of your models. So there's also options in here to adjust this grid that shows up. So this grid shows up automatically inside of Fusion 360. So you can see how um, if I was to work in here, and let's say we were to turn this body off, we were to add a new one. So let's say I was to create a sketch. So if I was to create a sketch, you can see how this allows me, this grid gives me a snap in order to snap to. So I'm in here with millimeters right now, but you can see how this is set up so it's a grid on every five millimeters. So I can snap to options on 30 or 35, depending on what I'm trying to do. And then if I zoom in, you can see how this automatically splits this into even smaller increments. So if I was to zoom out to here, each one of these would correspond with one millimeter. And so you can use this to be really precise without having to type in a whole bunch of different values. So you can see how I can use this in order to really quickly create objects to certain dimensions. So the grid is really helpful for that, but sometimes you want to adjust that. So sometimes you want to turn your snap to grid off you don't want this to snap to those increments. So you can adjust that in here. You can also adjust the size of those increments. And right now this is set to adaptive, meaning that these adapt as you zoom in and out. Um, but you can also set this to be fixed if you want to force this to be increments of like five millimeters or something like that. So you can also set up different viewports if you want them by clicking on this button right here. So you can see how you can set up a viewport um, from a top view, from an isometric view, and then a front and a back or something like that. Or you can go back to a single view just by clicking on this button right here. So if you want to work with multiple different views, you can do that. And then finally down at the bottom, you've got kind of a timeliner tool that's going to represent different points of time in your model. So like for example, you can go back to when you first created your sketch for your cylinder you can use this little slider to go to different points in your model. So like for example, you can see how this point right here is indicating that I extruded this object up. But if I was to click the slider back, then I can go back to right before that in time. And I can make different changes and different adjustments, but it gives you a really good kind of timeline of all the different changes that you've made. So you can use this to kind of manage that. You can also play through them if you want to. So like for example, you can see how you can use this to kind of play through all of the different changes that were in here. And note that you can turn that function off by clicking on the button for do not capture design history. 
So that's kind of an overview of the workspace inside of Fusion 360. So in the next video, we're going to start creating some basic shapes and getting an idea of the way that the drawing and the drawing and modeling tools inside of Fusion 360 works. So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.